on, you know, Moses calls Aaron and his sons. He takes the blood and puts on the right lobe, the lobe of the right ear, and then the thumb of the right hand, and then the big toe of the right leg. These are the three points of application of the blood of consecration. And that's all we want to discuss. Let's see its implication in the New Testament. Please, let's look at this. Hmm? He said, that's ram for consecration. This one is, if you go to verse 22. Remember, in verse, verses 1 and 2, he told him to take three animals. A bullock and two rams. Do you remember? Yes, look at verse 2. Among the things he took, he said, a bullock and two rams. So the bullock is for sin offering. The first ram is for burnt offering. And the second ram is for consecration offering. That started at verse 22. So look at verse 22. And he brought the other ram, the ram of consecration. So beyond the burnt offering, there are deeper dimensions of consecration. Beyond just offering the body. There are some orders. So he calls this one the ram of consecration. And Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the year and he killed it. Look at verse 23. He slew it and Moses took off the blood of it and put it upon the tip of Aaron's right ear and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. Please, friends, what, what are these indicative of particularly you know, when we look at this thing, ear, thumb, and foot, that thing. What do we deduce from it, and how does it apply in our New Testament work? Thank you so much, sir. You know, um, some time ago we've been taught this, about the ear. It pays attention to what you listen to. You know, beyond offering your body a living sacrifice unto God, it can still be corrupted by the things you hear. You know, as Pastor was teaching earlier, he made reference to a preacher that was teaching a Bible study and was listening, and then a song was playing somewhere. And as the song was playing, he was unconsciously nodding to the same song. We all know the, the songs out there. We all know the kind of sensation those things create in us in our quiet place because we've overheard them. So it means that what you incline your ears to. In Proverbs, um, David was telling Solomon, he said, incline your ears to my saying. Yes. Incline your ears to my saying. Yes. That does not mean that you may not be exposed to hearing some things yes. as you go by yes. the day. Yes. But what exactly are you giving your ears to? Mm. That is, what is taking the priority of your hearing? What do you hear more amongst other things you hear? Because, because of the kind of world that we are in today, you cannot just shut your, ear from, your ears from hearing these things. Mm. So anything at all, that we must hear the, the word of God should take priority of everything mm. things about God should, should take priorities of the things we listen to even in music on, that is let me not talk about eyes now what we see also is equally important mm. now as you get deeper as a priest you start putting restrictions in these things mm. I will talk about the, the term also but then let me leave this for, for others to, to, to talk about yes because Thank we are you. looking at the ear you see this thing about the ear Jesus addressed it in two ways. Two gospel writers captured it in two succinct ways. Mark captured that thing as content. Luke captured it as attitude. In Mark chapter 4 verse 24, Mark captured it and said, He said unto them, Take heed what? Everybody say what? Say it again. Say it one more time. So he's talking about content. Why is content important? The content of what filters into my ear will determine the content of what rests in my heart. And that will determine whether I am increasing or decreasing. Now see what he said. If I mind what enters my ear, then I will measure out with a certain measure that will make more to be measured to me. So, hearing is, uh, um, or rather determines whether there will be an increase or a decrease. In Luke chapter 8 verse 18, you see how Luke captured that one. He said, 
take heed how you hear. The manner, the attitude. You know, there are people who listen to the word of God absent mindedly. And then they make a lot of presumptions about the word of God. For instance, if I ask people now, uh, let's turn to John chapter 3, verse 16. Some people traditionally already know what he says. But let me tell us something. That type of attitude shuts us down from further revelations from that verse. Why? Because every verse of scripture has at least, at least seven different interpretations. You know one. And that's the one you've known since you were a child. And that's the one you still know as an adult. That's the one you used to preach to unbelievers. You've never used John 3.16 to address believers. You just know it as an unbeliever's verse. But Jesus was speaking to a teacher of the law. You've not understood how it applies to people who are highly knowledgeable about the law. So once they say John 3.16, he says, Ah, it seems pastor is talking about salvation. And the other dimensions don't open up because of a wrong attitude. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Let's let's put in some things. Praise the Lord. Okay. Okay. Let me start this way. You know, when we start talking about consecration, it it will actually be very important to say this: that this consecration we are not we are talking about now won't mean anything to anybody. It won't be waiting until we begin to see ourselves as priests. That identity thing is actually, you know, very important. Many times we want to function as priests. With, there's nobody that does not want to function as priests. Because with what is happening in our world now, we have actually seen that if you don't function from that point, you are a prey. Like the things that are happening around us. Once we say now, can you come, begin to command, let evil ha- all the evil that have been uh, planned against your family, let it... People, people want to pray and want to see these things happen. We want to go outside there and command things, speak to the sun. You know, these are the things we want to see happen. But when we, are, we now start talking about the consecration that follows this, I want the, the results without that consecration. So when we understand this, this thing we are talking about, that is being a priest and then accepting that I, I am a because once I accept that I am a priest, that intentionality and, uh, um, and purposefulness mm. comes in. Mm. Like now, I know that I am a mother. For about 12 years ago, I wasn't one. And I could, I could live. There's, there's, there are things I could freely do. About 15 years ago, I wasn't, I wasn't a wife. And there were things I could freely do. Like Abel was you know, Abel was saying, but now you have a family, it conditions you. And once you don't allow that condition to, to happen, conditioning to happen, it will affect your functioning as a mother, as a wife. Now, if you understand this like this, I also want to tell us before I come to the priesthood of believers that the same consecration we are talking about in the priesthood of the ungodly that is the wicked priesthood I need to tell us that they pass through see they study these things and they pass through this consecration let me, let me tell you one of them some of you have gone to preach to some persons and they want to fight you they don't want to hear that thing you are saying because they know the effect anybody that is spiritual understands the power of the gates the ear gates, for example. You don't need to be in Christ to understand the power of the gates. That is why sometimes when you, when you come into a, a, a place, like when you go to a place like North now, you don't really preach as you do here. Because, it, okay, I usually say, if people believe that what they are doing is right, and what you're not doing is right, then let them, they've, they've spoken to their people, then let them allow you also to, to speak. If they are not afraid that what you're going to say will convince the people. So they understand that power of ear. So they themselves have consecrated themselves not to hear that Jesus is Lord. Because they know the effect. Do we understand what I'm saying now? So for us now as believers, this consecration now, talking about the ear now, 
very important and it is something you have to consciously do like you know when I was talking with the ladies about yielding your members as instruments I said it's something that has to be conscious you know you know we start teaching this thing to our children every part of you your eyes we refuse to see these things anything that is going to defile anything we refuse to hear these things so once it begins to come I consciously because you cannot say it's not entering it is entering and just like like you say that in our quietness this thing now begins they, 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 yeah they start playing back so it means that it's something I have to consciously do if I don't consciously do it you know if I don't consciously do it it's going to affect me now in, in the book of Proverbs 2 when um, um, the father was advising the son and say incline inclination is something that is consciously done do you understand what I'm saying if you're going to incline your ears to something, it's something that has to be consciously done. Okay, there was something that happened two weeks ago. I, I told the lady that I'm going to use it because when she sh- shared this thing to me, with me, I was shocked. We finished um, ladies' retreat on Saturday, I think on Saturday, and on Sunday, she said she just sat down and just you know lazily and mindlessly started scrolling through her contacts and saw a number of a lady, I think a secondary school, whatever. So she just decided to call. She said, Mommy, that that call she made finished her. She started struggling, started fighting, started what, like, what filtered into what the filtered ear. into her ear. Mm. Got into as in she just saw herself what God broke her mm. out from. Mm. See oh, we finished retreat on Saturday. Mm. Mm. You know, you know there's something you usually teach us. Once God finishes speaking to you, mind will speak, speak to next. you next. Yes. yes. Sometimes you can be careless about this thing mm. because we have not understood and we have not become intentional about that identity of priesthood. Because what you hear is what fills your heart. Yes. And what fills your heart is what you're going to proclaim. Mm. You, you hear people say things like, I don't hear the voice of God. How will you hear? Your memory card mm. is full. Mm. Your memory card is full. And even your ear is not inclined to hear. Exactly. So even when God is speaking, you're not hearing. Mm. And then we have also heard that um, the leading of the Holy Spirit is the difference between life and death. Yes. And the truth is that there's no how God will not lead you. Mm. But because we've heard so many things, there's, a, you know, a lot of scriptures coming to me. The Bible says in this world that there are many voices. Voice. And none yes. of them is without As significance. Corinthians 14. 14. Yes. None of them is without significance. Yes. Now, if we understand that these things are not child's play, the things that filter into your ears matter. You cannot say, mm, I'm a mature Christian. I'm worried about mm. I'm not a honey. Mm. I'm worried about mm. I'm worried about mm. Mm. It affects you. So when God is speaking, you can't even hear. Mm. You have a prophetic grace. You're standing up on a prophetic office. My money done, eh? mm. So what is the <laughs> benefit of a prophet that does not hear? Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to stop here. Amen. Now you see words. Everybody say words. Words. Words are vehicles that convey convey thoughts. If, for instance, you want to tell somebody what you are thinking, like impart knowledge. Some lecturers impart knowledge. Actually, lecturers impart knowledge through words. Uh, some people impart discipline through words. I want to tell somebody, communicate to somebody what I have in mind. Maybe I have in mind to drink water. I tell the person, please go and get me water. I've spoken words conveying my thoughts. Is that correct? So any word I hear conveys into me the thoughts of the one releasing it. And if I keep hearing it, it now puts in me those thoughts. They form my own thoughts. Let me show you an example. Oh. Do you know that in First Samuel chapter 17, First Samuel 17, Israel went to war against Phil- 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 Philistine. Philistine. Or Philistine. But whatever. The Philistines. Eh? The Philistines. There's one man that came out from the Philistines. His name was Goliath. Yes. And he started speaking. I need. I think I should show that thing. First Samuel 17, verse 11. Look at it. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose ye a man for you 
and let him come down to me. I want to read verse 16 because of our time. Verse 16, look at verse 16. Look at verse 16. And the Philistine drew near morning and morn and evening and presented himself. How long? When Saul and all Israel heard. Everybody say heard. Say it again. Say it one more time. How long did they hear it? Somebody, yeah, somebody may hear something once. Now watch you. From a source, you heard it. Then you travel away from that source. It has registered in your memory. It plays again. You hear it a second time. You keep hearing it, keep hearing it. Remember, the way faith comes is also the way fear comes. So they had this thing for 40 days. And the result was that they were dismayed and greatly afraid. I think, let's look at it in Amplified and let's understand what happened to them. Amplified, this verse in Amplified. Oh, it's not, okay, uh, NLT. They were terrified and deeply shaken. Forty days. They had terrifying words. That's the same thing that happened to people who sleep with their secretary. It's someone that spoke to them. Someone suggested something. And they started, now let me tell you something. Thinking on something is hearing things over and over again. Meditation is hearing things over and over again. That's what meditation is. To focus the thoughts on it. And you see, um, it happened to Nehemiah. All those wars that Sambalat and Tobias and all the rest of them. But the thing is that they didn't give it thought. But guess what? Let me show you another thing here. Verse 23. Verse 23. Verse 23. As he was talking with them, Goliath, that's David now. Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. I, I, I want you to give it to us in KJV. There's something I want to bring out. Yes. So as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. But I like that ending part. And David had them. That's the mistake Goliath made. But notice the action David took. David did hear it twice. He heard it once and took action. You know, there are some things you hear, you just relax. After a while, you hear again, and it starts weakening you gradually. It starts polluting your thoughts. But for David, he heard it once. And he took action immediately. Please, anything that is unpleasant you hear once, attack it. Because that thing has filtered into your ear to attack something precious in your heart. Flee. I did not say throw out. Just disappear from, from that entire environment. Because one time we were taught about words, and then pastor told us that you don't fight thought with thought. Especially when you've heard it once, and then at the cool of the day it is coming again. Don't try counter it through thinking. They are on the same ground at that point. Pull the thoughts to a higher ground. You counter thoughts with words. Because just like, for example, if you see what, what, what David did here, he spoke directly to Goliath. Yes, yes, yes. That is, he spoke back. Mm. So if that thought wells mm. up again, mm. there is no need trying to say, um, uh, actually, I bind you in Jesus' name. Mm. Speak it out. Mm. Now, you have no place in this. I am a priest. That is why you must have the scripture handy in your mind. That is, I have the scripture because, you know, there is one, one, let me not call it, is one of my favorite scripture. That Matthew chapter 29, talking about you err not knowing the scripture, not the power of God. It means that you should have the scripture at your fingertip that could counter anything you've heard in time past. Because I tell you, some things that you even heard five years ago can play now. Mm. It can mm. play now. Mm. It is, that is, it is storing at a place waiting for the time and the hour of manifestation. Mm. So you should know exactly what to do at that time. Even, okay, let us be practical a, a little. 
that time that third world oil came on you in your room. You know, you cannot stay within the confines of your room wanting to, wanting to, 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 to bind it. Because not until you agree that you are a priest and understand that the act is sweet. So because you are aware it is sweet, what should you do? You flee. You lock your door and take a walk. You lock your door and visit a brother. You just walk out. Just, see, if you're a brother, if you're a brother, if you're a brother visit Very important. Very important. If you're a brother, visit a brother. If you're a sister, do so. That is... Your faith is worth fighting for. Mm. Your body is worth fighting for. Mm. Keep it. Because with each act, you are losing more than you imagine. Mm. Do we understand that? Mm. So you must pay careful attention to it. Mm. It's a battle. Fight it. That is a battle. I like Fight that. it. Fight it's it. Keep it. It's a Keep battle. your perimeter straight. Mm. If not, mm. let me tell you, you are the one taking it, taking it easy for the devil. He's mm. not taking it easy on yes. you. Yes. Is not that is why every suggestion you see are things to pull you down. Your own data, your own data is leading you astray. Your own phone is pulling you out and you are quiet. Friends, this is no longer the time to come and be doing uh, any I goes. After all, I am righteous unto God. The righteousness of Jesus is unto me. Fine. As good as that sounds, you have a pact. Burn your body. Counter it with words. Allow your mind to be filled with the right things mm. to counter everything. Mm. Praise God. Now, you, you see, okay, the Bible keeps saying, He that has ears, the person who doesn't have, some of these things on our phones, I hope you know that reading is hearing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's another dimension of hearing. You get to the cyberspace and whatever, or you get materials, you start reading, and some things start. Thank you. That's what you keep reading. I remember there's on a lighter mood, one man, you know, went to the wife was pregnant and then went to the hospital. And then, um, as the, the doctor now came out that did the baby catching and announced to the man, Oh, your wife was put to bed and she gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. And the man remembered that um, the wife was reading the wisest king that ever lived. That's Solomon. No, uh, no. Um, the, the, the Godhead, that's one. That's God, that God is one. The wife has reading that God is one. She gave birth to one child. The other one, the wife also was pregnant and went to do this thing. And she was reading the three wise men. She gave that to three plates. The other one was now reading Alibaba and the forty thieves. I remember that his wife was pregnant. He fled to go and stop the wife from reading Alibaba and the forty thieves. Then the other one, the wife, the wife was reading about King Solomon. Multitude now, 1,000, 1,000. <laughs> you, you get the point. So, words, these are powerful. So, that is why when God is speaking, oh, brothers and sisters, document so that you can hear it again. Because that is how faith comes hearing and. So, you may hear the first one in church, but when you go home and look at your notes, you hear it a second time. Here is the bottom line. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, from verse 20 to verse 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. So anywhere you don't find my sayings, shut down. So incline, you know, we've described this some time ago as, you know this word I used to set dishes. You buy a decoder with a dish, or even like Go TV it has an antenna. There's an angle. Like when they came to the village to put DSTV for us, the man told us it's 45 degrees and it has to be. There's one kind of explanation he gave. I was just looking at him, I was wondering how he knew it. So, you know, he just positioned it like that. Pierre, signal came in. Incline your ear to my sayings. God is transmitting at a certain frequency. You shift from there, you stop hearing it. And 
that is the reason one thing that is very critical in guarding the ear gate is defining and selecting your company those people that hang around you speak to you online both offline and online this is important define them select them and discipline them anyone that begins to accept there is a demon you cast it out so that the person comes back to his or her eyes and it's like Jesus did to Peter cast it out so discipline all these things put a tab on things that filter into your ear is affecting the residue in your heart are you getting that so now look at it look at verse 21 let them not depart from thy eyes which means hear them in such a way that they form pictures before you because the scriptures are not understood until they become pictures something you can identify with you can see that's to see means to understand keep them in the midst of thy heart so when they are coming protect them if I do that see what will happen for they are life unto those that do what which means they are the bible didn't say they are life unto those who hear them it is sought for and how do I do that diligent search I incline my ear. I am looking for that signal. Where is that signal? Where is that signal? And suddenly I get it. He said if I find it, it is health to all my flesh. It is life to me. And health to my flesh. So this is called healing. You know, people can quote, By his stripes and heal, they heard it. By his stripes and heal, by his stripes and heal. Have you found it? It is when you find it. That it starts being effective in your life. That's why when you when you now yes. make declarations, you even believe the declaration you have made. Yes. That if it seems the declaration you're not seeing it, you insist because you know that this is what it should be. Okay, just okay. something okay. to keep in. You know, okay. just like you said that when discipline your ear, please don't be sentimental about Thank it. Thank you. Especially those company of yours that that speak those words that are not right in your ears because you know look at a man like Amno you know it's a very pitiable story it is very it is let me allow I wanted to take it but let me allow you to finish no continue continue please so you know he had a a desire you know to and he was just thinking about it just thinking about it till his friend came and asked him bros this one what is going on mm. and he told him and he gave him one advice and guess what before that his friend came he has never thought that it has not even crossed his mind because if it had he would have called his friend and, and maybe sought for counsel mm. so this is what I want to do how, how do you see it mm. but that his friend introduced that thing and that was what led into, you know, the things that happened and he died. So, in, in disciplining your company, please don't be sentimental. Mm. You have a friend, you have friends from secondary school, from mm. nursery, from kindergarten, you know. But you know that anytime this person comes and speaks to you, something dies, something inside dies you. in you. Mm. Fire goes out. Mm. The appetite to do the things of God dies. You have to jettison that person. And you do it fast. And you do it fast. So you see, redemption comes through words. Destruction through words. Both of them. Okay. Now let's move over. There is the second one, you know, so that we see how we can clear this. Thing. The thumb of the right hand. The thumb of the right hand. So let, let, let's look at what, what, what it signifies. The thumb of the right hand. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, anytime we talk about the hand, we're actually talking about um, um, what, like the things you handle, the things you touch, 
like your business you can also call it your business like what you, what use, you do what you do what you what you do to make money what you do your your career i think we can also put it that way yes. and when we also so say your career parenting comes in there yes because this year this parenting thing has really yes. really a lot of people yes. have, a lot of people don't know that parenting is actually what we need in our society and you know now as i'm talking about biological parenting i'm also talking about um spiritual parenting because if you're a disciple are here you should actually actually see how powerful words are you don't just you don't just talk you don't just talk to someone that has come to know Christ better on that you just anyhow if you're somebody following up a new convert what do you tell the person knowing that what you're going to tell the person is going to you know make that person stay fast so what um when we talked about the uh, the it you know like I've just explained your career your so these things have to be sanctified they have to be priestly so, so your hand should be an extension of God's hand. You don't touch what you're not supposed to touch. You don't, um, you don't do certain businesses you're not supposed to do. There are businesses priests should not do. Yes. No matter how lucrative. Very important. Very important. Because I'm going to show you the scripture. No matter how lucrative that job is. Let me, let me still say something before I come down. You know, me understanding this priesthood actually. You know, when I was in second year, there was something God asked me to observe. I have an uncle who is a hidden, pure hidden. I'm actually trusting God for his salvation. But, okay, let me not say what I want to say online because it's um, another dimension of it. But I'm trusting God for his salvation. But he's a pure hidden and he's very proud about it. This man got a lot of consecration. And let me tell you, since my second year, that should be in around 2001, 2002, he has actually grown into that priesthood. Now he's into other deeper dimensions. Like, you know who I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Other deeper dimensions. And this man, like, you know, I still observing him. He has a lot of consecrations. Mm. There are certain things he does not do. There are certain places he does not go. There are certain things he does not say. Mm. And he's proud of these things. I know about a family that there's the elder brother in that family. Very, everybody, you know, everybody loved him. Everybody, like, we know everybody loved him. But in that family, he was not really, really loved like that. But he was loved anyway. But there's this younger brother of his. So this elder brother became sick. There were suspicions that it's the younger brother that is doing because the younger brother was also into hygienic uh, stuff. But finally, the elder brother died. But there were observations because these people take their consecration. They are not sentimental about it. Like they don't look around and say, what will people say? Because God was telling me that the problem he has with his people is that we are so natural and still want to operate in the supernatural. Like we are so conscious of what people will say that we don't walk into that supernatural. It actually changed my mindset. Like there are certain things I want to do. Somebody will say, hey, what will people say? I said, that's not what... Mm. Once I know it is not against humanity, mm. go ahead and do the right thing. It is that thing you're doing that will even make the people to... Ah, thank God you did this. So yes. do you know that the day this man was... The, the day the corpse of this elder brother was brought... You know, ordinarily now, people will go and see. Do you know that this younger brother did not see this corpse? Like, you know, ordinarily, people should go. Mm -hmm. Immediately, the siren of the ambulance was heard. This younger brother left the compound. I want to believe that he was told, don't mm -hmm. see him. Once you see him, this will happen to mm -hmm. you. And he kept it to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. point is that people... We are not even really expect, exactly. like expecting him to do mm. otherwise. Yes. Nobody shouted at him. Mm. Nobody did. Because mm. they know that he is into hidden. So mm. they, however he wants to do it, let him do it. But we ourselves that are believers, mm. we are too concerned about, hey, how will people say, how will people feel, how, how will it sound that uh, uh, this business that is lucrative, uh, hey, I've been selling this business, I've been doing this all this while, and now that I'm born again, I want higher consecration. You're asking me to leave this. Mm. What will people say? Mm. The next thing they will now start saying, eh, or so talking about Jebeloka and on. But these are things that I expected because a carnal man cannot understand the things of the spirit, neither can he. Like, there's no how he can come to understand it. You know, why I'm making all this, I'm saying all this thing, it, because we need to understand that the wicked priesthood. They know that their power is in their consecration. Yes. Mm. 
And we cannot have this and hit this at the same time. So still coming to, to this, there are businesses a, 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 a priest should not do, cannot. It's not about religion. Yes. It's not about Sundioka. Yes. If you want to be for the Lord, blaze. Yes. Blaze for Him. So that, you know, overall, in the darkness, they put that in our darkness. In the light, they put that in our light. Just image leba, image leba. And we should know that when God said He's going to spew someone out, He did not say He's going to spew the cold people out. Yes. He said, I'm going to spew that person who is lukewarm. He's neither yet. God hates people that, does not, that don't have identity. Mm. You just have to have identity. So that if he wants to deal with you, he will know how to. Mm. If he's going to lift you up or he's going to bring you down, you know, I'm just trying to make emphasis. So that consecration is talking about what you do, what you thought. Because, just like you explained to us, if we're going to bless the people, it has to be with our hands. If you're going to heal the people, it has to be with the hand. I'm just trying to imagine how, you know, I touch a man that is not my, my husband mm. irrationally. Mm. And then after touching the man, mm. and then I'm coming to lay hands and, and I expect sickness to go away. Mm. Exactly. Do you understand? Mm. Uh-huh. So that's actually mm. the contribution. Please put up um, Ephesians chapter 4. Get that verse where he said, Let him that stole steal no more. And there's something I want to say there. <laughs> is it 28? <laughs> 28. Is it 28? Okay. There are some things he said earlier. Then came here. Say, let him that stole. Everybody says stole. Say it again. Now, what does it mean to steal? To steal is to take what does not belong to you. To take it. Sometimes, while the person is watching, sometimes, while the person is not watching, or while the person is not aware that you're doing it, you see internet fraud 419 this cyber crime a priest should not get in there you see bet king bet whatever all this betting nonsense a priest should not get in they are just you see dealing with drugs these hard drugs ulumbili and the rest of them people are stealing people's sanity is part of stealing. You see fake drugs. Sell chalk in form of paracetamol and whatever. People are stealing people's lives. Yes. Repackaging expired, Repackaging product, expired products. Uh, I remember this. Repeat, yes. Mm. You, you see. Now, see what is happening in Anambra State. This place that is flooded with water now. That area, if you go and check well. Okay, let me not say it online. Let me not say it online. Let me not say it online. Because some of these things are retributions for what people did. How can you go into your bathroom and put up pure water? Inside your bath, in your bathtub. You see bathtub. That is where the person packages pure water. We'll collect all the impor in your dustbin and around the environment and go and sell to these people. I don't know. There are some drinks. I told you about one that I bought sometime for my father. And I was feeling like a proud son of his father. And got home, you know, my shoulders were high. And I was very proud. That night, that night, we now brought the drink. Opened it. Brothers and sisters, there was no gas. Wine, no gas, no pop sound, nothing. The cock just came out. Nothing. <laughs> anyway, we said maybe that um, there's another type of preservative they put, some of these things. Poured it into the glass. You know, usually if there's gas, it will bubble. No bubble, it just rolled out. You know, like Zobo. <laughs> Even Zobo had bubbles. Sir. You know, it just rolled out. When we tested it, it was like yo-yo bitters. It was bitter. Very bi- We thought we were drinking we were in Passover. You know, they eat it with bitter herbs. <laughs> eh? It was a horrible time. But that thing was packaged so people did it. And sold, and sold it. The See the other one that we bought, um, Golden Moon. The expiry date, the person used hand to wipe it off. It almost killed Monday. Yes. Yes. Our first daughter yes. Yes. almost killed her that night. Yes. Yes. And she refused to take, unlike Mandy, yes. that is a lover yes. of cereal. Mm. 
She just took about one, two, three spoons and refused. And then, in fact, my wife knows what happened. You know, can tell the story better. At night, she started vomiting and choking in her vomit. If not that God woke my wife up and, you know, some of these things. By now, we'll be telling another story. And it's somebody who did it with his hand. You see how people use their hands to bring people pain. Instead of using their hands to do things that are profitable, he said, but rather let him labor. Working with his hands, that which is what? Please give us another version. Let's see. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work. There's one song I heard. It's this old song. Um, you know, but in the song, I know some of us know the old version. I know some of us have heard the new version too. He said, if you... Don't kill yourself. Don't do whatever. Instead, go and be a barrel pusher. Is more honorable than to put your hand into nonsense. Are you getting what I'm saying? Come here, you are But nobody will go Are you getting what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody watch you. You won't go baro. You won't go baro. God will give you result, but you need to yield to God and follow Him. And these consecrations. He said, if I now do that, I can then give generously to others in need. Can you give us a message? Did you used to make ends meet by stealing? Well, no more. Get an honest job. So that you can help others who can't work. There are people who are incapacitated. Due to one reason or the other. So that's one of the purposes for work. So we can help those who cannot work. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, because I'm still coming to that. So, honest job. Don't use your hand to siphon, sign out money illegally. Don't collect office stuff to your house. Don't use public funds for private purposes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because these things are things that pollute the priesthood. And remember, let me tell you this, because maybe by Saturday we'll see it. God sacks people from priesthood. Yes. He sacks people, gives people quick notice. You see, what you do with your hands. This is very important. Children are given to you. Don't molest them. You are a teacher. Don't molest female children if you are male. Don't molest male children if you are female. Don't do that. Clear from those things. There are things you double into. The enemy now begins to dominate your life. Don't write you came at 8 when you came at 10. You are a civil servant. Don't cut corners. You are on your loaka, a seamstress, tailor, or whatever. And your hands are not skillful. You finish making clothes for somebody only for the person to discover that you made clothes for him or her that he or she will give out. I don't know if you get what I mean. And then to collect the clothes. Abola Ogonamba. Somebody gives you clothes January. By January the next day, you tell the person it's just sleeve that is remaining. <laughs> After one year. <coughs> These are things that pollute the priesthood. If you know you can't do the job at record time, say it. Why collect it in the first place? These are things that unbelievers look at and they question the authenticity of our faith. 
somebody you are a student, you still do a WBK in exam hall. You still do expo in exam hall. Why? Can we, okay. Okay, can we make a little more emphasis about artisans and okay. those who work in you know, those skills? Okay. Because it's, this is, you know, like we were saying yesterday or this morning, this is actually one area that if we can get Christians to be truly yeah. Christians, to be truly Christians. Now, we know that there's not so, so much money coming in, but... When you honor God with your finances, when you honor God with your financial life, with your business, there's no how. God, God is faithful. That is, do it for God's sake. Because we know it, it doesn't come so much. You, 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 you sell fuel in a fueling station. The person comes for 5,000 naira. You give the person 2,000 naira. Mm. And, and, and then you now say, let me pay tithe so that it will now mm. uh, balance, it balance well. well. You, you charge somebody for something and then you are using, like you sell somebody for a product, you're using another product for make, to make the cloth or to do, if you're a mechanic, like... Yeah, mecha level, mechanics, yes, mechanics, electricians, electricians. Somebody gives yeah. you a car to repair. You start hiring out the battery. Exactly. The other day, there was one electrician I gave my distant to work on. By the time I came back, my battery was in another person's car. I quarreled with him and it was a new battery, brand new. That day was the last day I took my car there. The very last. You see some people, they are charging phone with yeah. your battery. Yes. They carry your battery, go elsewhere to start a car. And they are paid for it. And they are paid for it. And they still charge you for the work they are doing for you. Please, give, give some... I, I know you have a lot of examples. You have experiences. Like, yes. Like, you know, you are a barber, you are um, um, a, uh, a hairdresser, you are... The point is, once it is something you cannot do, say you cannot do it, then build capacity. Yes. Build capacity to do it. And the point is that once you are honoring God with your finances, He gives you certain ideas. There is no work, oh. There is... Even if you decide now to be... To, to, to uh, get wheelbarrows, people will hire. Mm. So, somewhere, yeah. somewhere, I heard that the... Um, only you see in the wheelbarrow union, Nanyamoto. Mm. The person is not a wheelbarrow pusher, mm. but he is a wheelbarrow mm. pusher's mm. head. Mm. Only you see, Mano Nanyamoto. Do we understand? Mm. Uh -huh. So, but what I'm trying to say is, let, when we come into this sector, let us find Christians. So that if somebody says, I want to roof my, my house, you know tell the person, please go and call yes. Ikechuku, go and call Frankens Frank. Frank will roof that house. And roof it under two weeks. Not when you when you say two weeks, you you have you hold you are holding this house. You are holding this house. You're, the next thing you you put off your phone, mm. and then uh, you come to church on Sunday, clap your hand. It's not good. So how do we? Okay, let me ask. How will you now be on top of that roof as a priest? So we now say you are a priest in the in the um, in the marketplace, marketplace, marketplace. and then you are now hitting that kind of you know with all the lies. Uh, you know, and then there's a child start convulsing. You you won't even have the confidence to come down because yeah. your, hands hands are dirty. Dirty. your hands are already dirty. We need Christians in all these sectors. In lecturing world, in, we need in educational education. Mm. Oh my school, we have beans. There's none of our, our teachers. Uh, not just little child. Okay, on your child need do. I na ba puta child we for. There is one after the other weevil. So as she's coming, to, she's coming with the weevil bees, and then we'll now be bringing out the weevil. Primary school. One of the <laughs> That's your lesson. <laughs> you see, when we talk about brain drain, we are thinking. Of, and amazingly, amazingly, and disappointingly, majority of people who do this. Okay, let me not say majority. Some of the people who do this are people who go to church. Yes, sir. So you now begin to wonder if somebody comes to preach to you with Bible and you know that that person I you know I remember you remember that one I told you I met in Joss. That my he's late now. Yes, what he did selling big handout compose. And now he has died. Don't know what killed him. 
But you get what I'm saying. The works of our hands are very crucial. There is even one young man, you know, Bobo Twin. I need to say, let me call him. A very faithful, with integrity. But he is a Muslim. With integrity. He tells you, come on this day and collect your clothes. By the time you come, he has finished ironing, packaged it, kept it for you, labeled it. You don't look for clothes. He just puts his hand, gets your clothes for you. Finish. Sometimes, because I asked him his secret. How do you, you get all these things? You know, he told me that if it's a cloth that will take him one week to sew, he gives the person two weeks. So that he will be sure, give or take that he will, be, he will finish it. Sometimes he finishes it and calls you. Tells you your clothes are ready. You can come. Before the time or before the time he gave you. There's another one I gave my clothes. I wanted to use for my younger brother's wedding. By the time he finished, his wife was about put into bed. That's when I collected the clothes. And guess what? By that time I collected it, he hadn't put button. The button was missing. After one year plus... You know, you see that type of thing. If we have believers there, you can now be certain that if the believer tells you, Yes, I am by your corner, turn, you see me. If you turn, you see him. Not, um, I, I, I'm just there now. I'm just, just look around, you see me. Meanwhile, he's still at a call, or he has not even left his house. The hands. You want to say something? Yes, I want to just say a few things. You know, I've, I've experienced this, especially with the artisans. You know, <clears throat> so when, when people come to, for example, fix the generator, mm-hmm. and then you know that, okay, God, you want this generator issue, oil. But you know that the oil and the rings are connected. And why fix it? It's not that the rings is bad. Mm-hmm. You leave it, you just do the oil, collect the money. Later, when the children break, so you not come and say it's oil. You're not, you, so, why not look at the whole thing? Say, this one is wrong, this is wrong, this is bad. We need to change all these things. This is also um, integrity in the work yes. of our hands. Yes. And then, also another thing too. This scripture in NLT, it says, um, get a good work. All the things that make a work good is a work that you are doing and then it does not undermine your priesthood. Mm. Sometimes we take off jobs that, you know, we are now trying to catch ourselves. Like, we, are, we, are, we start losing crafts. We stop doing devotions. We stop going to church. Because of maybe salary. Yes. Because of salary. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. I was telling someone recently that I would rather work in a in a place and they pay me fifteen thousand naira, and then I come to church. I am effective. My priesthood is, you know, than work in a place that pay me thirty thousand, even fifty thousand naira, and then no devotion, no service, nothing. You just decide. You just become like you know, lots wife. You just you, you just personalize because of work. So the kind of work you take up. Don't take work because of the pay is awesome. Praise God. And then finally, I want to talk about uh, like this scripture I saw, Proverbs chapter 11. Um, Proverbs 13, verse 11. Proverbs 13, verse 11. Actually, for, okay, the wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathered by labor shall increase. Give it to us in NLT. Say, wealth from get rich quick schemes. Quickly disappear. You see, you know, this is something that it, it comes out in different clothes and forms, and, and we still fall for it. We still fall for it. It's not for priests mm. to get involved in all this get rich priest. Mm. No matter, they like, let them come with a um, banner of revival because, you know, they come with so many things. You know, church and bring God, yes, into, and bring God it, into it, it and then our addiction. Is, no, 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 no. Praise God. And if, if you look at this version, this scripture in the um, Living Bible, see, there's a, there's a picture I saw. There's a picture I saw online. You know, a masquerade was in a bed shop. 
Even more school is doing better than that. Yeah. In school regalia. In school regalia. I was in the show. <laughs> you know, what, what the Holy Spirit showed me from that. Like, if people in more school want to get rich quick. <laughs> What is the spirit doing with worldly wealth? <laughs> and the other one I saw on a bike, I said, hey, so much to reduce the enter bike. I thought they just disappear and appear. <laughs> you know, the other one, a car knocked him down and he died. You know, wonder how cars knock down masquerade. Please go. <laughs> so, you know, now they comment under that picture. You know, you are just laughing and all that. But then, you know, the list will not. Uh, yes. Talk to me. Yes. That is how my children, exactly. with their full garment, full garment. the effort, the Uri Mantun, all those things, they are in bed in that shop. You know, check his course. One uh, over 2.5. You check. You know, you know, all those things. See, see, see. Because this scripture, if you look at it in that living Bible, it talked about, but you just ask, is gambling a sin? Is bed in Niger a sin? Please, does that? anybody have living Bible? Let's read it from Living Bible, please. Wait, wait, so you use the mic. I think it's quite important. Wealth from gambling quickly disappears. That's wealth from gambling. From gambling quick, quickly, yes, quickly disappears. disappears. Wealth from hard work grows. So you see that. Wealth from gambling. So as a priest, I don't enter into... Because it's something that... Pastor, it shocked you that ninety percent of young men are into bed night. Yes. Ninety percent not talking. Ninety seven point six. It's very serious because <laughs> even people in church or church, well, people in church. There are some people sitting here now. If we start looking somehow now, we'll check you 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 are you are doing that. That is it's very serious. It's very yes. serious. There's there's this man I met in Uli, you know, we are going to preach to him, tell me, Pastor, give him money, and I don't, I'm not eating today, or, you know, okay, God will provide. One of the days I visited him, he was playing, he was booking game with someone else's phone. And the game of Thrones, then, uh, Lord, <laughs> I have to win how much, it's for 4,000. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I was not discussing with him, I, and I asked him, um, since I started playing these birds, how much have you um, won so far? He said, ah, Pastor, I do we know, like, everything don't reach like 34, 35,000. I come, so I now asked him, how much have you lost? Ah, he said, Pastor, if you gather around, you like, don't reach to buy cow. <laughs> <laughs> so, this actual, because these things are designed to benefit. Addictive. Yes, it's addictive. addictive yes. And, you know, I want to say this, because God delivered me from it. Yes, but, you know, 27, 2016, you know, when I joined Potters with you, you know, first, you kept emphasizing on this verse in Nigeria yes. yes. under the tree, when yeah. you go, you not yeah. talk about it. Because then, I got into it, and, you know, it was, the, I was getting some money, mm. and, you know, with a Christian background, you come and pay tight. Mm. And when you pay tight, it's actually the thing, mm. you know, <laughs> increase it so. <laughs> <laughs> but then the Holy Spirit is telling me because the thing is if you are involved in something wrong the Holy Spirit will tell you about yes. it you will know yes. Yes. he will tell you so he tell you. See, this thing you are doing is wrong I say Pastor, God what will I do this is my only you know, student this is what I can do to be making money and you know sharp sharp you just, you just wait for weekend or Tuesday you know you just book the thing and then you know so but then when I come to service Pastor will say it's very I say ah what is this? What is this? And I discovered that he started taking. I'll be in lectures. Lecturer will be teaching. I'm browsing sites. You know, the thing the Bible says that the glory of the young men is their strength. Mm. You now push it further. Mm. Maybe, you know, you now know. I now started scouting for many sites. In fact, I started helping people book games. Like, I will help people to start supplying them the things that will win and all that. It got that bad. It became so addictive. If I'm sleeping, I'm taking off game. If I'm reading game, everything is just game. It was so bad. So you got broken out of it. So, I'm saying, especially for young men, because this thing is, is very rampant among young people. It's not for priests to engage in such things. Imagine, for example, now, you, you might enter um, 
one bed in that shop, and you now see pastor. Mm. You know, mm. um, this one, it's like saying, <laughs> so this thing they form, ah, they don't lose form. Oh, maybe I put this one over 2.5, over 2.5 goes. We have learned to score. You know, you see that it shows you, 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 were, it shows you, were, <laughs> you are giving to this thing. Where you have destroyed, you have destroyed the credibility yeah. of that prison. Yes. Very now you, now you finish coming out from there and you now meet someone to say, brother, I want to share the gospel with you. I want to... Dis- what you, know, you, you will not accept the gospel from it's such mouth. You. It's true. Yes. yes. Very true. That's okay. Okay. Okay, let me just say a few, few things. Okay. This. So that we'll get to the okay. last because one. Because the general principle for me about this is Anything that is controversial, don't get involved in it. That you need to explain and explain and explain and explain. explain, and explain. The, uh, actually, it's not this. Uh, actually, this is what I, clear. Even in words, in going, anything you have to explain two times to be clear. Just like Pastor was uh, 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 speaking us earlier. If you if you must explain your earring, please don't wear it. Mm. That is, if you must explain the shirt, please don't wear it. Stay clear from anything controversial. Because you are a priest. You know, just like um, the reason why I said 97.6% is an accurate figure. <laughs> because <laughs> I was, I was um, because of some persons I am meeting with, I went to carry out a study on this particular thing. You see, this, this scripture is very powerful. That is, wealth from gambling. Statistics have shown that everybody that, that won money through lottery, gambling, no matter how much the money is, Within the space of three years, they are broke again. Mm. Even if they win 100 million now, three years, because anything that is not found on hard work mm. cannot be maintained. Cannot, because the same way it comes quickly, it goes out quickly. You know, even in the US, we're told that there's something about uh, this, this act is actually an a act of slavery. Because what does slave do, even after you've been given freedom? you tend to want to buy things that you feel is associated with freedom to attach to your body so that you feel, just as the pastor was talking, 100,000 hours to wash. Is the price tag attached to it. That is, on what grounds? I've asked, I have asked ladies before, you are putting on Brazilian with one. I am not aware it's Brazilian. It is among yourself. Do you understand this kind of thing? Anything you have to explain, stay clear from it. Stay clear. Because in the Western world, as, 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 as I was saying, a lot of blacks, sir, buy more of Mercedes, Gucci, Burberry, Bentley, the, yes. whatever. Mm. They buy more compared to the white race that have more of the world. Mm. More, that is, the white race that have more of the world, you, you will see them driving trucks. Trump. Trucks. Old vehicles, old, antiquated vehicles, Volkswagen, the old ones. The producers. Exactly. The, the, produce, the producers, yes. exactly. Yes. producers of these mm. things they are buying. Mm. Now, this is that quick wealth that you want to get. If you check the inner motive behind it, is to have features to your body that will not make you more beautiful or more handsome. That is, it's just for features, not for any other thing. Because my friend has it. Let me get it. Because this happened. Just like one thing now that's happening to celebrities, they will buy cars that they, they, they cannot ride in Nigeria Road. Mm. Because even the speed breaker in, in Lekki would hang the car. Mm. So the only reason why you are spending 160 million to buy a Ferrari is for Instagram pictures. Mm. No, no. Just, I mean, if if you think deep on on this thing, this is this is advanced level of slavery. That is, mm. we have left being a slave normal. Mm. Now you are now entering it. Volition. That is, you are throwing mm. into it. The reason why you are working hard, the reason why you are keeping late night at night, is just that you should buy a shoe. You should buy one thing. Not that you want to expand anything. So, the only thing I, 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 I would say. Scripture said um, that for the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm. One of the major reasons. You know, the hand is one of the only parts of the body that can reach out to every other part. Mm. Are you aware? Mm. The hand. The hand. With the hand, you can touch any other thing. That is why anything you do with your hand, it has adverse effect. Both in your today, your yesterday, and your future. Pay careful attention. The general will remain the same. Anything that you would explain, sir, don't do it. Even if it is good and it's, it is sounding legit, but if you explain it, don't do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Lastly, let's quickly get into the right foot, the big toe. 
of the right foot. This the third area of consecrating Aaron and his sons. So what, what's that implicative of? Okay. Um, in a very short term, it's, in, it's talking about company. Where you go to. Where you don't go. See, eh? you know, sometimes we will feel uh, there's this sense of soft maturity in our head of I can handle it. Me, I am mature. I can take care of myself. Is it not just to go there? Let's just do. Anything is doable. Now, even, even, even the kind of things you put on your body is dependent on the places you want to go to. Mm. Formerly, it was like that. Before it becomes normal, then you start going everywhere with everything. Why? Because your perception has been filled with that place you keep going to. So, that place you keep going to is now is not the same thing for everywhere. What am I trying to say? It's very simple. Pay attention to your company. Iron sharpened iron. So does a friend sharpen the countenance of, of the other. So, it means that anything you associate with, and when we talk about where you go to, it has to do with inanimate also. The things you handle. That is, Walking into a bed ninja, bed ninja shop, yes. you walk there. Yes. And now, yes. yes, I'm not saying don't watch football. It's amazing. But when you do it at the expense of topmost priority things, mm. you walk into a, a viewing center, knowing fully well that everything there, maybe they are smoking, they are doing this, they are doing that, you are saying, after all, I don't smoke. But you are hearing it. You are hearing the entire thing. That is, you are passively smoking. Mm. Now, now, the point is, <laughs> there, there was something a, a barrister told me some time ago. You know, when you enter a place and then Nigeria police come and pack everybody. Mm. I know they are not the 10,000. Mm. Abina, I, mean, I know follow. I know follow. Mm. <laughs> I know follow you pay. But the people who sat in their house mm. will not pay mm. that, that amount. Why? Because you started going. So mind the kind of places you go to. As a matter of fact, let's assume if you go there, there are some certain conversations you hear. Carry your leg and move. So for a priest... Not everywhere. You are not supposed to be seen in every kind of place. In every kind of place. Let's take note of that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. I want to, um, let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> chapter 2 from verse 1. It says, And you have he quickened who you are dead in trespasses and sins. Okay? Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Okay, three. And among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And whereby nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now go back to that verse two. It's talking about that work there is talking about lifestyle. The way I live my life. The way I live my life. So the term talking about W O R U K, my work. This one W A L U K, my lifestyle, how I live. So how do I live my life? It says, I no longer live my life according to the course of this. So I've been redeemed from the world. I'm now a priest. So I stopped living the way I used to live when I was an unbeliever. I stopped talking because sometimes you hear a believer talk, you're wondering where is this one coming from? Like, like what's this? You know, they make use of the F word, like they just use it. And the way they dress and all that. For example, you are in the world. Any party, you are there. Mm. Any party, you are there. Mm. You're not coming to mm. Christ again. You're mm. not the same thing. No, 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 no. Mm. It shouldn't. All those things end. All those things end. So, your company changes. Praise God. Because one of the things that determines the quality of your life is the quality of your friends. Mm. The quality of your company. Mm. That's why you go to Psalm 1. Mm, yes. You see, they that don't walk mm. in the counsel of the ungodly. ungodly. So it is very, very critical. My company, my company, and then my lifestyle, my character. So that is the um, the big two. And if you notice, 
the big two is one um it is said that if you cut off your big two you cannot stand mm. yeah, you lose you balance, lose balance. You, lose balance. Yeah, you lose balance yes so it's actually you see that character in that fruit of the spirit is what balances my life so as a priest i must pay attention to building character get us uh, some is it 37 31 the law of his god is where in his heart therefore none of his steps shall slide do you know that some places where we go once people see us in those places that is the end of our message to them you know like if at 10 o'clock 9 in the night 10 at night my compound people see me come out of a lady's room that's they see me even if I wanted to raise the dead they just see me come out and woe betide me if I came out adjusting my clothes in fact, sometimes I have to see yourself, see your shoe or something. Yes, I there. I yes, so something that, that belongs to you around that know. area. You know, but your ROL voice, <laughs> your morning cry voice, your evening cry voice, whatever voice you have around that area is gone. You may not have done anything wrong, yes. but for the fact that at that time your feet got you there and you left there at that time. There are wedding ceremonies you don't attend. I think I should say this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You hear their wedding. You know the type of person the person is. Put your envelope sent. There are burials you don't attend. Let me tell you, one of the laws that govern priesthood, if you go to the Old Testament, is that actually, uh, when Nadab and Abihu died, you know what God told Moses to tell Aaron? He said, don't come out from the temple. Stay there. No mourning, nothing. It was Etama and um, Eliezer that they now called to come and carry their corpses. He told Aaron, stay there. Concentrate on what you are doing. Don't move. My mother's, father's, sister's, cousin's, nephew, the son, died. I'm now going. We have flames of fire conference. You are going for mother's, father's, sister's, cousin's, aunt, nephew's, son. That's the one you are going you see, people who carry certain consecrations don't enter into certain places. There are places that defy consecrations. Let me tell you, there is a time, because I began to... Should I say this? Uh, we're online, we're online. Let me not say, let me not say. There are places, like, if you go to the Bible, one of the things that happen, if you attend a funeral, that's where somebody died, is that you become unclean. When you return, that is usually what we do each time we go for burial. We return, we bring the blood again, we purge ourselves. Priesthood is not, the priest is like the eagle, not chicken. You don't see the eagle everywhere. You can see chicken up and down. But anytime you see the eagle, you, you know it's a special location. And once you see it, that's why people used to say, if you see the eagle, Janya Ike or something, because you don't see the eagle every time. You see it once, before you know it, it's gone. And then you won't see it again. Departmental party, you are there. Uh, sectional party, you are there. In intercontinental party, you are there. Laptop party, you are there. <laughs> uh, 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 lodge night party, 
you are there in 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 tosdicating party you are you are associated with parties hmm that that shows you have a party spirit yes sir, <laughs> yes, sir. the spirit of party <laughs> Hmm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Now there are some parties you will attend, maybe as a result of profession or whatever, but you should know your limit. Yes, you know those parties have limits. Yes. There's a time it will get to. People that have dignity will leave. Yes. That is when nonsense Absolutely. will start. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, um, I also want to say this. Talking about the, the, the tools, it equally applies to, just like from the example Pastor gave, it applies to who come to you too. Yes. For example, just like we are saying, you should not be found maybe coming out from a lady's house at 10. Mm. A lady should not be found in your house. Mm. You are not married. Mm. A lady is in your house, mm. 7, 7.30. I don't know what she is doing there. Because by the time you start explaining it, you will be the one that will be knocking people's door for oral health the next morning. Mm. And yes, the previous night they saw Amaka coming out, mm. 9.30. The other day, Shinari coming out, 8.30. And you are asking why are people not coming out? Why would they come out? Mm. And the other day, you are holding one, one hand. You are swinging on the street that you are seeing are off. Now, it still involves things that come to you too. Mm. Things that come to you. Mm. Shut mm. your doors to eat as a priest. Not everybody. There are some persons, even there are some time they knock your door and ask for matches. Stay there. That is, stay there. Is it matches you want? Wait. Get the matches. Give the person. As a matter of fact, you are not under obligation to give people your... It is your thing. There are some time... I am just saying... There are some time, for example, you come and knock my door at 10 p.m. Equensu is a bad devil. 10 p.m. A lady... Equensu. That's the Equensu. Equen... Osu. You, see yes, you see, somebody who is of the habit of knocking your door at 10 p.m. Mm. to come and collect water. A lady, and then she will not rush out because it, it's night now. Mm. Night, night is better. Mm. Anging something. She will ang something. On her dress. And then knock. Because you want to show your Christian brother. He doesn't know how to prove Christianity, my friend. You see, if you cannot project to know that you will be thirsty. If I give you once that day through the window, if you come again, you will choke. The next day, money will rush you. See, it is worth guarding. Yes. Very important. Mind the things that come to you too. Because a lot of things that come to you will discredit you. Sometimes, you'll be shouting and preaching, you don't know why. Mm. Because anytime you knock a door, they've shut, that is, they've shut the door. You keep talking and talking, it's not working. Later, you you not be confessing sin to the Lord. Lord, what have I done? The mm. sin you committed was that you answered Amara. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So please, because men walk by what they see. So give that honors to them. Do you understand that? Mind what comes to your mind where you go to, too. Know that even in your class and in your workplace, there are some certain persons that are associated with gossip. Yes. Stay clear. Yes. Because by, because yes. by talking to a gossip, you are mm. a gossip too. Mm. Know these things and just know it. Even by the time the person enters your office and now lock the door, he was coming to collect Anglo. Mm. Keep the door open. Mm. Collect it and go. Mm. Do you understand that? Mm. That is relate with people first as a priest before as a professional. Mm. I just said to, to add this. It is not only where you go to, but things that come to you too. Okay, you know, this thing, I've used it to teach several times because I, I, was, I, I was really ignorant of it because, I, you know, I, there was nothing. There was, there, I, I, wasn't, I didn't have any evil motive yeah. in my heart. And so, you know, when I was serving, I was the zonal coordinator of my mm-hmm. zone. Yeah, that's, I was that the zonal coordinator. Important. And, you know, I, I, was doing, do, I was doing really, really well. And before I went for youth service, I had targets. There were people, particular people I wanted to raise for the Lord in that, um, in, in, in that town. I don't want to mention the region. But, you know, I, want, I went there like um, a special agent. That was my intention. So when I got there, I was more interested in the people than, than the money. Though I still got the money there. But then when I now got, to, got there, I became a zonal coordinator. We had, um, we had a patron. There was a young man, not married, you know. 
I don't want to say this online, but you know, like people will say it's not my spec thing. So there's no, there's no attraction even like to say there. So even if there's attraction, the Lord had trained me, you know, on, on this. So, but we were working together. And where I served, there's usually a dust storm. You don't, you don't leave your, your door open. You don't leave your window open. So once that dust storm comes, sometimes for days, there are dust everywhere. Once you go out. So every time you see us, all our, we, we dress like them. Because you just have to be covered from head to toe. So sometimes I may want to, want to have a program. And I had to discuss this thing with him. And so I go to his house. And then the windows and the doors are closed. Like... The, not to know, or just to discuss the uh, hair. Um, as for your patron. As for my patron, no, to discuss them. After everything, I will come out. Or sometimes he will give me food and I will be happy. I will eat food, you know, and I will leave. You know, as a cop and I will be behaving like federal, mm-hmm. federal uh, baby, baby party. Anywhere you see food, you go chop. So, you know, this thing kept on happening. I didn't know also that this young man liked me, you know. So sometimes he would come from his house, bring a chicken for us, who eat chicken, you know. And, you know, unbelievers can... Uh, they started calculating. This man is single. And we have a fine zonal coordinator. This thing cannot be normal. And these things were being, happening also in the lodge. It was happening in the community. And this is a community that I had in my hand like this. It was happening in the man's house. And that man's um, compound is uh, face me, I face you. So that compound that is laden with people. And I go to preach in the community. Like, I took charge of that community. Do you know a time came? If I'm walking on the street, hey, I'll, it's, I'll be, it's, you know a man of the street. I know people are speaking something. You now enter a shop that used to, you enter the shop, people that used to smile at you, yeah, it's now dry smile. You know, I, I still wondering what was happening. A time now came, if I, I come out for fellowship, I'll be the only person. Oh, somebody should tell me what is happening. Nobody. So, one day, I, you know, I was straight, Lord, what could this be? Is there, people are busy. No, 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 no. I didn't even attribute it to the devil. So I was sitting down one day and then my secretary walked into my room. He said, I, Mama, I must tell no, Damo, I must tell you this. I'm not going to keep. I said, What is it? He started talking. Like everything he was saying were strange. Like, if one of the things he said, he said, It's going to be shameful for you if you get pregnant in this land before I, that is like You are wondering where like, it was coming where? from. Like, can you, do you know, I came back one day. I came back one of my preaching uh, trips. Because as a family, I led to Christ. So one of the days, the, the wife was sick. Uh, I don't want to mention the region, but the wife was sick. So I went to pray for, for, because the man had already believed. I went to pray for the wife. And I was coming back around 637. From another direction. By the time I came back, they had lock, locked the lodge. Our lodge, we used to lock at 8. They've locked the lodge. I knocked and knocked. Zona coordinator, lie, lie, lady open. I did not know that they were seeing me as an adult, <laughs> as a fornicator. She he now walked into my room that day and said, See, eh, I have to tell you, nobody's going to tell you. He said it's going to be a shameful thing that you leave this stuff. I said, Can you tell me what? She said, Oh, you, you, you don't know we are seeing mm-hmm. what you're doing with mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. She naked. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. I said, Like, can you ex- as I could, as my mind could not expand to. Then our licensing officer will be, he will wake up one morning. Then this song he used to put, he will say, yeah, Nobody, holy past, my brother, that person will answer, nobody. I was thinking, like I was ignorant, I was in the middle of the congregational gossip and I did not know. People, that people stopped coming. You come to Sunday service like this, it will just be maybe pathetic people that did not still tell you. I mean, that'd be one thing, especially the men. Most men we stopped coming to church. And I did not know why. Not knowing that it was my ignorant attitude. So the day he now told me, I said, please. He said, I have seen what you, how he used to bring chicken for you. I said, it's all, it's all of you, all that, all, all that eat chicken. I said, no, one of things. Hey, that day uh, I died. I didn't know what to pray for. He said, ask forgiveness. I did not do anything. Like, like, but now, I need to prove to the men, I did not sin against God. Mm, mm. But as far as the men, as the human beings are concerned, mm. 
I am a fornicator. Look at mm. you, Zona mm. coordinator. You have met that in their minds. When that those windows and doors mm. are shut, shut, we are fornicating. Is I. So I called that brother. I said, How can I leave fine, fine boys in the east? And come to this Allah corrupt. That's what I told. And come to this dry and desert land. So I said, Show me a man here that is fresh. I said, How can I leave fine? I said, What I did not do in the east, I will come here to do it. But it did, it did not still. It, mm. I know I had to go mm. back to God. Mm. Father, mm. I knew it was it, the devil. It, it takes Who's, appealing ah, to the mercy of God. I appeal appealing to, God. to God's mercy. I appeal. I said, Forgive me for my ignorance. Mm. Forgive me for my stupidity. I did not even know. I started praying. That was how, I, then instead of talking, I talked to my secretary, then talked to a few other people. I said, nothing. Like, I tried to, I said, like I, I had to explain and explain and explain. And then I now had that breakthrough. Because if I left that um, zone like mm. that before mm. living, mm. I would have destroyed, destroyed everything, the, work, the work I began in that place. So many, many of us may not know the effect of what we are doing on the gospel. I experienced it firsthand. Even by doing, doing nothing wrong. I ex- because men are moved by what they see. And these things are very important. God bless yeah, us. I think your very this thing happened to me too. You know, awesome wonder. How, you know, we started something when I was doing internship. The power of God. There's this uh, meeting we used to have on Saturday. I think last Saturday. Is it last Saturday? Of every, okay, Friday into Saturday. Yes. Every month. To the point that lecturers started coming. To the student hostel who started coming for vigil. Through the night. They will stay there for vigil. The power of God will hit people. People will come under power. You know, I know the ministry God gave me. One thing led to the other. Um, my assistant, because I was a class rep. My assistant... They said I call it halfway. And I had given a word of knowledge during one of the meetings, vigils, that there are people resisting uh, accepting clergymen as husbands. That the power of God will come on them to show them. Two ladies flew out. Actually, one of them, one of them was caught outside the meeting place. That's where she was caught. The power of God took her outside. The other one, the power of God took her in front. If you see how the part, don't worry, you see on Saturday, you see what will happen. Tomorrow night. So finally, what happened? Ima, our people used to say na onye kotero godi ekoteli. Because she was my assistant. Assistant. So I will go the same lodge uh, hostel. I'll go upstairs. She was upstairs. I was, you know, middle floor. She was upstairs. So I'll go there. We'll discuss. Yes. This lecturer. What are we going to? Sometimes we discuss the seven, eight. And then they see my surpass or whatever outside. <laughs> After they were just like you said, countenances started changing towards me. I said, Sensing aggression. The room, one of the roommates we had in those days that used to drive message, you know, started becoming host. He used to allow us to use the place for, but he started becoming hostile. So many things began to and see how the devil planted that. The three of us that started that meeting, the devil just planted ladies into our lives. The three of us. Suddenly, or someone that died a natural death. We were not doing anything with them. Just that we were found with them at certain hours. But it was the same hostel, or the same hostel. But at certain hours, people stopped coming, the lecturer stopped, everything stopped, everything collapsed. The entire walk ended. If Satan wants to get you, it will take God to stop him. And the person must yield to God. If you have messed up, probably ignorantly, in the Old Testament, there is something called sins of ignorance. When you get to know you are guilty, that's what the Bible says. 
when you get to know that thing, you are guilty. Anybody here, you are guilty of some of these things we vitamize. You need to appeal to divine mercy. You need to appeal to the mercy of God now. And let God show you mercy. Otherwise, you see this thing you are building with your hand. You, with your hand, will tear it down. Associations produce definitions. Because you can't, you like, be explaining whatever since they've seen you together. That's the end of your ministry. Some people have ended ministry because of this type of carelessness. Their ministry just completely Even ended. Even liking a post on Facebook. Yeah, liking a... Thank you! Yes. Liking a post, you know, you see... Hey! Just that there's somebody I said happy birthday to. Call started coming in. Pastor, are you endorsing this person? Are you, I saw your post on this person's wall. I saw this. I saw this. What is going on, Pastor? I said, hey, can't I tell somebody happy birthday? <laughs> Just because I got as I said, now there are people I have blocked. You know, you taught me how to block people. <laughs> or rather, unfriend. I have unfriended all of them so that my typing hand will not mistakenly type something and send. I don't see their post. They don't, I don't care whether they see mine or not, but I don't see their own again. This is how we close. Uh, um, Jude verse 3. Jude 1 verse 3. Jude 1 verse 3. Or maybe let's start at verse 1. Jude verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Look at verse 2. Mercy unto you and peace. You see, mercy first. Before you start talking about peace and love to be multiplied. Look at the next verse. Beloved, when I gave all diligence... To write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you. And exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. Which was once delivered unto the saints. Why do we contend? Verse 4. For there are certain men crept in on our ways. There are people the enemy has planted along your destiny paths to discredit your work with God. You may be ignorant of them, but he isn't. And that is why every believer needs discernment. If there is anything you have done to soil your hand, your garments in any form, this is a time to appeal to the mercy of God. Everybody, let's pray. It's a time to appeal to the mercy of God. Lord, show me mercy. That mercy that is correctional in nature. 